Hey guys, welcome to Upfront Games, and we are going to get into it pretty heavily today with the news between Xbox, PlayStation, uh, Nintendo Switch, and Stadia. So let's just jump right into it. PlayStation's video for this week is DCL the game. Check this out. Alright guys, so that was DC All the Games. It looks kind of cool if you're into drones and racing them. Um, <laughs> you know, the idea of being able to uh, jump in and compete for actual drone races is kind of cool. Um, however, I have a feeling the controls be a little bit different, so um, you'd have to be prepared for that. Uh, anyway. <laughs> So Rainbow Six Siege welcomes Operation Void Edge. Um, it's bringing two new operators and a rework of the Oregon map. A new attacker named Lana will introduce a hologram that looks, sounds, and moves just like her, while a new defender named Oryx can crash through breakable walls. Uh, this also brings free updates to all players that includes the Oregon map rework that expands the basement and the office tower as well as renovating the attic connector in the meeting hall. Uh, they also aim to make a barricade or make barricade destruction clearer and consistent improvements to the drone spawn locations, a revamp player hub, uh, balancing changes, and a new limited time event are also inbound. Nothing is said about the release date at this time, but it is included in the year five pass. So if you're a year five pass holder, by all means, grab that when it pops out. Um, now, PAX East is a great time to get a, get some close-up looks at some of the biggest upcoming titles. And this year, PlayStation is attending with The Last of Us Part Two, Dreams, which we all know released, um, Marvel's Iron Man VR, Neo 2, Doom Eternal, Spelunky 2, and more. Uh, PlayStation recommends that if you are attending PAX East, that you uh, secure a spot using the Experience PlayStation mobile app because space in each one of these booths is going to be limited um, in order to play. And with the reservation, you've got your time slot to play the game, so that's kind of cool. Um, PAX East 2020 kicks off on Thursday, February 27th, so we look forward to seeing what comes out of PAX East at the very least. Um, we all kind of know that it's not going to be news on PlayStation 5 as there's a lot of things going on right now with the price of the PlayStation 5 and all this other information. However, uh, I do hear that it's the price is MSRP is about 450 at this point. They're looking at potentially a sale of 470. Um, there was a lot of talk of 499 originally, which I think for the hardware is not a bad deal. Um, and so it, I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see what Sony does because they did lose money on PlayStation 1 through 3 originally on launch. And PlayStation 4 was the per first profitable system for Sony, but they didn't really make a whole lot off of it. I mean, it came in, I think, at 381 
and it was three ninety nine at retail. So there, there's they didn't they didn't really close too big of a gap there for profit, but it was the first profitable system that Sony had done. And we expect to follow suit when it comes to the PlayStation 5 in some way, shape, or form originally. So we'll just have to see kind of how this all shakes out because it's due to shortage of equipment, um, etc. So anyway, that's it for PlayStation. Let's move into Xbox. Xbox's title for the week, Dragon. Check this out. <laughs> So that was Dragon. Uh, that comes out on the 21st, so look out for that if you're interested. Um, State of Decay 2 Juggernaut Edition was announced and is launching March 13th. It will include all three add-on packs released to date, Independence Pack, the Daybreak Pack, and State of Decay 2 Heartland. Um, this adds a ton of new content and improvements for vets and new players. If you own State of Decay 2, Already, this is a free automatic upgrade for you, so you won't have to go out and buy another title or buy it as DLC. Um, by improvements, there is a brand new open world map. There is rebuilt post tutorial experience, heavy melee weapons, graphical improvements, control scheme, uh, mission and gameplay bugs, and improve the audio experience. So. If you own State of Decay, don't go waste your money on the Juggernaut Edition. All of those uh, add-ons will be free to you. If you don't own it and you're trying to catch up, by all means, buy the Juggernaut Edition because it's going to have everything in it already. So um, check that out. The Division 2 is getting a sizable expansion in Warlords in New York. It's going to feature new zones, gear, weapons, quality of life improvements, a new raid, and more. But before that... Episode 3 of Year 1 also launches this week and takes players to Coney Island. If you're not a Year 1 uh, pass holder, save your money because the season ends with Coney Island and Coney Island is free for those that are not Year 1 subscribers as of February 19th versus the 12th for those that are Year 1 holders, which they've already got their hands on it. The only thing you're missing is a few missions that hold little weight in terms of equipment given, and at this point, it's still a $40 price point for a year one pass. So it's not really worth getting right at the tail end of year one. Um, so in Warlords, uh, you have Aaron Keener, who's the target in Warlords, and he's working on a new bioweapon. And in order to take him down, you have to take out his four rogue agents. Each in an order, uh, sorry, those four rogue agents, before you can get to him, each have their own special skills. So the level cap will increase from 30 to 40, and it launches on March 3rd, and will now include seasons that will include manhunts to take down high value targets within that three month window. I think every shooter at this point is going with seasons. Um, as well as a lot of other um, action-based titles. So, at least in the multiplayer genre, that seems to be the direction 
Anyway, that is it for Xbox. Let's move into Nintendo. Uh, Psycho Shooting Stars Bravo. Uh, that is their title for this week. So check this out. So that was Psycho uh, Shooting Stars Bravo. Uh, it looks pretty interesting, I guess, from an arcade perspective. Uh, but if you're into that sort of thing, that does release on the 18th. So go ahead and check that out. Um, so Katana Zero has some free DLC that's still in development. It was announced last year. And now it's reportedly three times the original plan size. The publisher has confirmed that it is in fact three times the original size via a Twitter uh, post and it will still be free. There were no specifics on the DLC itself, but I'm sure more will be coming soon on this DLC package. Crash Team Nitro, Crash Team Racing Nitro Field has been releasing multiple season updates but they have stated that the next Grand Prix release will be the last one. They will release some new time trials, new characters, skins, and carts after the Grand Prix's release. So the question is whether Beanox is moving on to a new title at this point and need the time to concentrate on that instead of additions to Crash Team Racing. We'll just have to see. That's it for Nintendo moving into Stadia. And of course, there is no videos for Stadia. They have confirmed a title release that is exclusive to Stadia, but it's not for a while yet. And so we don't have a release trailer for them yet. But it's coming. But anyway, there was an uproar over Activision Blizzard pulling away from NVIDIA GeForce Now. But now there's further information that have given some reason to this possible decision. There is speculation that Activision is preparing an exclusivity deal with Google Stadia. If this does exist, it's not setting a good precedent for World Cloud Gaming. I have to agree with Rich at Review Tech USA on this because he basically stated that there's no way that people are going to jump on separate platforms in different directions because the developers slash publishers are calling the shots. I think that's 100% legitimate. There's, I don't care if Activision, if EA, if like all of these different publishers decide that they're going to push their own cloud service at $10 a month or $5 a month, I'm still not paying 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 dollars a month just so I can have access to only their titles in this one specific app versus having their titles on one console. Overall, it doesn't make sense. So that's a concern when it comes to cloud gaming at this point. I think the console is going to be the link for quite some time because certain publishers and developers are going to destroy it in a way that just like this, like they're out for a exclusive deal with a certain company, which is great for them. However, at the end of the day, if you're going to be exclusive to somebody, that means everybody's got to go to them to get your titles. The question is, is it only cloud gaming that they're going to be exclusive with? I would assume the answer is yes. However, I personally think that the likes of Activision and a couple other publishers out there are 
doing the wrong thing in a lot of different cases. A lot of the microtransactions that hit the Call of Duty series under Activision uh, is one very good example of Activision trying to milk their fan base for more money. I don't necessarily agree with it. If you're the type that likes being able to just purchase stuff to succeed in the game, then pay more power to you. However, I'm not that type of person. I like to earn my way and be as good as I can based on what I've done, not what I've paid for. Now, I may catch some flack for that statement. I get it. If it's you that purchases stuff, great. You're still the person that I'm pissed off at when I'm playing a game that this is multiplayer and somebody just randomly outranks me by a ton because of the fact that they bought their way there. That's a little irritating. However, that being said, in Call of Duty and games like that, there's still a balance there. I can still kill you. That's just how it is. But certain things give that person the paid an edge. And like I said, I don't agree with it. Um, but I think it is a way for those publishers to make more money off of title that they've already had out for quite some time, if not right immediately on launch. And to a lot of true gamers, it's ridiculous, and we don't like it. Just saying. Anyway, um, five new titles have been announced for Google Stadia. They include Panzer Dragoon Remake, Serious Sam Collection, Spitlings, Lost Words Beyond the Page and Stacks on Stacks. Only Lost Words has been given a release date in spring 2020, and that and Spitlings and Stacks on Stacks are exclusive to the Stadia platform. They need their own blockbuster exclusives at this point, um, and that will begin to push the platform in a good direction. But maybe Stadia is in fact looking at improvements to ensure that the service can deliver this, these exclusives properly. I'm hoping so. I honestly, as I've said here, I am an early adopter of Stadia. I do enjoy it. But at the same time, I really think that they need to do something to improve because the truth of the matter is everything that's on there now I can get elsewhere. And I only use the free stuff at this point because it's free I got titles for free that I didn't necessarily buy on other consoles so I can play them and enjoy them etc but I refuse to purchase any new product on Stadia until I know that it's in fact going to be around for a while that's just me but anyway that's it guys so of course leave your comments questions concerns below like comment or like subscribe and share so we can start to build the base of the channel and by all means check us out next week where we will dive into the week's news again and of course the end of the month is going to come very quickly being that we're in february so we will release what our end of the month video is going to be next sunday so stay tuned and we will see you later thanks for watching